program and the data of a computer, no matter how complex it is, can be copied as, may, as much as you want. Those are numbers. Our experience has the properties of a quantum state that does not, ex a quantum state does not exist in space and time. It can only be described in Hilbert space and dimensional spaces with dimensions which are complex numbers, not even real numbers, complex numbers. That's why, and in this theory, clearly, the quantum state is the representation of qualia. So in this, is a theory now, I will describe it a little bit later, more precisely, but it's precise enough right now, qualia are represented by quantum a quantum state, quantum information. A quantum information cannot be reproduced by a computer. So the, because the quantum state cannot be represented in space and time, it is a property of a field, of a field, because in Hilbert space there are no, there is no matter, nothing. The matter uh, are states of fields, excited states of fields. If you study quantum physics, you know that an electron is not a, is not a little ball <clears throat> and it's not even a particle, it's not even an object. It is a state of a field, the state of, an of a field of electrons. It is an excited state because it appears in space and time. But the quantum fields can only be described, and its state can only be described in Hilbert space, which is a deeper reality, if you believe that to be reality, or it is a mathematical abstraction. But now we had to go beyond the mathematical abstraction because there are quantum computers that can operate, you know, they, they give you a solution. So where is the operation of the quantum computers? Could it be in an abstract mathematical field? Of course not. So there has to be a reality, a deeper reality, out of which this space-time reality that we call reality emerges. So, um, so therefore the model, think of the model in the following way. Consciousness is a quantum field. The body is a structure in space and time that is quantum and classical, because the cells are made of particles and atoms and molecules that interact quantumly, but they interact quantumly in space and time, and also in Hilbert space. Is it, it, it can exist in both areas, in both fields. And this reality that we call reality, the reality in space time is classical. So the body is a bridge between consciousness and this classical world. And the consciousness is the one that controls the body, just like we control a drone. We control a drone, the drone gives us information from where it is, and we, and, you know, it's semi-autonomous, like our body is, and we can control the drone by the body. So now, the body, in, in, if we go into us, then the, 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 uh, the, the one that controls the drone is our conscious field, that's who we are really, and the body is a drone, and the, and, the, and the drone reports to the conscious field this reality by, by taking what is here through the sensory system and the brain and creating quantum states inside the cells which are read by the quantum field. See, that's the right model to think about what consciousness is. So consciousness think, is a yeah. field that has consciousness and free will. We'll get to the free will later. But, but first, very interesting to get. Uh, this is mind-bending stuff. I think even for very smart people <laughs> sitting here, still mind-bending stuff. What helped me in, in trying to understand it is, of course, the, the famous movie, The Matrix. But then, of course, simulation would not be done by computers, but it would be consciousness itself, right? It's the quantum field. The fields. Matrix is classical, so that is. Yeah, of course. But the metaphor is uh, of being in living in a dashboard reality yeah. in space time um, done by computers, but if we would put off the headset, it would be like pure consciousness. So you are also claiming, 
outlandish stuff, according to some people, that, that consciousness doesn't, is not your body. It, consciousness... Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So, which, that's a good news, actually, if you believe, believe me, because if you believe to be a body, then when the body dies, goodbye, guys, you know, <laughs> there is nothing left of you. But if you believe what I'm saying, then the body dies, you don't go anywhere. You're still in the, you know, in that r deeper reality in which the quantum field that you are exists. Mm. So but that's that's what this this means. Very curious what the questions are here. But I, a common critique um, when consciousness is related to quantum mechanics is, of course, we don't understand consciousness. We don't understand the quantum weirdness. So therefore, they must be related. That's a critique people have. What's your response it to that? Is very easy to solve. You turn it around, just like making silicon gate. All right, and then quantum isn't weird and consciousness no, isn't weird No, you turn it around, you say, you must start with consciousness and free will as postulates. They must exist. They cannot be defined with any simpler way than themselves. Think about it. Not only that, but this postulate Contrary to the postulates of quantum physics, this postulate is self-evident. Why? Because each one of you knows within that you have consciousness, and you also know that you have some level of free will. So you already know, self-evident. You start with a self-evident postulate. This is Descartes, right? And, it's, and now yeah. that's the theory that, that, the real theory that can be tested and that I have developed together with Giacomo Mauro Dariano, which is a world authority in quantum information. And so, if you start this way, you can explain why quantum physics has the crazy properties that no physicists have been able to understand. So, so, mm. so in other words, because you're conscious, that the stuff that you are conscious, the, the, most imp the most critical stuff that you are conscious, qualia, must have a mathematical representation that has those properties. The, quant the quantum state. The quantum state has exactly the properties of your consciousness. It's not Non-reproducible, yeah. and you can only know one bit per quantum bit. From the outside, even myself, I, I cannot give it the, can, I cannot, my, even the owner of the state cannot reproduce it. Never mind measuring it. Mm. If you measure it. If I want to share it, my private inner life, my conscious experience. You I have, have to, to use shareable systems. So I have to shareable, collapse. You have to use have to classical to, information. Yeah, collapse the wave function within so to speak, to a particle which would be a symbol that I, a word that I would then exchange yeah. with you. And the collapse of the wave function, now that you mentioned, yeah. that's a decision of free will of the field. Of the field? Of the field, okay. the conscious field, right? I mean, uh, what else, you know? You, how can, how can you be, how can you have free will if you're not conscious? Just think about it. You cannot, you know, Free will means that you can, that you know what you want, and you have a sense of what you, you know, of the reality in which you are, so that you can act with free will. So consciousness is absolutely necessary to have free will. Since physics, physicists have never considered consciousness a property of quantum, quantum, quantum fields, they, they think, they say that the collapse of the wave function requires two things. Requires randomness, a random decision, not decision, a random event. And that random event cannot be algorithmic. So it's a non-algorithmic event, exactly what a free will decision is. Mm. So now that we have defined consciousness as a quantum state, as a property of the, prop, the, the qualia, as a property, as quantum state, now automatically, because the field is conscious, then that random, random non-algorithmic event is a decision of the, of the quantum field that is conscious. And here, because I the think, two must yeah. come together. And where see? do you link with Roger Penrose? He would 
he would sort of not follow you all this way, but he would say, I cannot account for uh, phenomena of mind that seem to be non-algorithmic, like solving that chat on true Roger, creativity. Roger got to the point of saying, yeah, consciousness somehow is connected with non-algorithmic, with, with, with non -algorithmic, something non-algorithmic. And the only phenomenon in nature that we know of that is non-algorithmic has to be quantum. Is that? Say it again. The only phenomenon in nature that we know of that is non-algorithmic, or then we have to go quantum. That's sort of the... the it is the collapse of the wave function. Yes, okay. And, and so now, with yeah. knowing that there is conscious, if we start with consciousness, yeah. then that event is a free will event. Um, you see? Yeah, very curious of what is being said. Rings a bell, it just raises a lot of questions. I see a question there in the back. Uh, you, let's see if the... Is the bubble box uh, working again? <laughs> no. Oh, you have a handheld. Maybe Jens, that you. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Is there a button? Yeah, there you are. Yeah, yeah. the black button. There's there a button somewhere. Yeah. Um, so the question is, 